Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hi, this is Laurel. Welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talk, a podcast that talks about how to make money, how to keep it, how to invest it, and how to use a team. And every week, I'm either live bringing you very specific tips and techniques and strategies on how to make it, how to keep it, just ideas on different asset classes. We're in such a different economy right now, one of the best economies we've seen. But we're going to go to the best asset I always think you have, which is you. You, your entrepreneurial venture. What are you doing to really get your business to thrive? And I have a dear friend, longtime friend. I don't even know, Bill, how long we've known each other. Bill Walsh is on with me today. And uh, how long have we known each other? Let's say at least 15 years. Yeah, I'd say at least 15, too. I think uh, our kids were really young. That's what I remember. No doubt. And uh, Bill is an extraordinary marketer, builds big teams. He has a company and a whole brand around power teams that he builds. And I asked him to come and talk about how to make money. 2020 is around the corner, and we need your businesses thriving, not just barely surviving. So welcome, Bill. It's good to be on, and um, welcome to your audience that I know is listening from all over the world. So yeah, it's an honor. And yeah, there's no doubt 2020 is certainly the big year. And Laurel, it's been great to know you for so long, but also to watch you thrive versus survive. It's neat to see how many lives you've changed with your message and your story and your live events. And I think it's um, you've done a great job of building a culture of entrepreneurs and business owners that really do uh, step up their game consistently. So it's an honor to be on your podcast. Well, thank you. And uh, 2020 is going to be fun for us as well as we collaborate more and more. So let's talk about thriving. I mean, you have had so many businesses. I've had so many businesses. We've helped so many companies. And I think, you know, one of the things I don't think people realize about people like us is we learn as much from them as they learn from us in some way, right? Because I mean, people ask me, how do you know so much about so many businesses? And you're so similar. We have so many people who come with interesting ideas and they get successful. So start with your history a little bit. You know, what what got you into it? What had you get so damn good at it? And uh, let's talk about the thriving. Starting out out of high school and college, became a trader, traded in Chicago, New York, and then did turnarounds for almost 10 years of just fixing businesses. We were brought in, fix them, clean them, close them, sell them, whatever it was. And it was always usually around some form of lack of sales. We've found it in business that sales will solve most of your problems. And uh, it was always fun, I, I think, like a game of chess that you had to look at the business and figure out, you know, did they have a product that was priced to sell and priced for profit? Did they have the right team in place? Did they have the right execution plan? And then for many, many years, we launched and created products and services for the small business world. We created the Rainmaker brand for small business. We created speaker programs. We created lifestyle events, all designed to help entrepreneurs worldwide take their idea, take their concept and uh, move it into a real business that could generate real cash and serve real customers. And it's funny you ask that question, like, what are the three things that I've found over the years that without these three things, there's a pretty good chance the company's not going to make it, Laurel. And one of the big ones was always leadership. You know, I think everything's, will, as Maxwell talked about, many others, that everything will rise or fall in leadership. But there's so much more that goes into that. I believe that when you look at a business, you've got to have a clear vision as to where the business is going. You've got to have a mission or, you know, a process to get there. And the mission that most people put down is how much money they're going to make. And I think you should move away from how much money you're going to make and write down how many customers you plan to serve by this date. The mission needs to really be able to move based on customers served, not just we're going to make a whole lot of money. And then, of course, um, as you look at the other side of that coin is that everybody talks about, well, the goals are everything. Well, the goals are nothing more than a mile marker that moves you closer to the vision. So when we look at the leadership, it's really that who is that leader, even if we invest in a deal. It's not just how good or bad the product is or how great the company sounds. We invest in the leader. I'd rather take an okay idea with a great leader than a great idea with an okay leader. Because if it's an okay leader, they're going to fail. And, and many times, once again, it goes back to they have a clear vision, clear mission, clear path, clear purpose. Do they actually have a real business plan? Have they actually taken the time to build a real plan that runs a Gantt over a couple of years that looks at the business from all sides of it. You know, do you actually have the money to sustain the business? Do you have the process to make sales? Do you have 
People that even take credit cards, believe it or not. I see so many websites today. Laurel, that, know, that's that, that, they, they don't even take the money. <laughs> it's like people want to pay you, so make it easier for them to pay you. So the first thing is, without a doubt, is leadership. And I know that you've looked at businesses for a long time and, and certainly the what makes it, what doesn't make it. But without a doubt, if there's not a clear vision where they're going, no clear mission to how to get there, they wind up in a place called Busyville. And this is what kills most entrepreneurs, I believe. You know, they, I love that. You ever call your friends, what are you doing? I'm busy. I'm like, busy doing what? I don't know, but I'm busy. Well, they're usually busy going nowhere and they spin. And, and then after a while, I think what Henry Ford talked about was so good. He said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. And, and the minute self-doubt sets in for a small business, an entrepreneur, they freeze and they quit. And I see this kill more businesses that are so close to success. They've got the things to move from survive mode to thrive mode, and they get stuck in that busyville. And of course, busyville leads to burnout. So I'm sure that uh, you've got a couple things you want to add on that one too, but that's certainly one of the main points we look for when we look to see will a company thrive or survive. Bill, talk about, people ask me, you know, I say that similarly, is you need to lead and manage and lead are very different. How do you teach some of your people, maybe give some tips on how to start leading? And the one that I'll start with that I tell everyone is find someone to follow. The amount of people who don't know how to lead, don't know how to create the vision. And they're, you know, again, we're such a world of people, you know, we're taught and behaviorally to be employees, not entrepreneurs. So that leadership skill, that marketing skill, the sales skills, I always say those are the toughest ones to get ingrained into an entrepreneur. It's like turn on your creativity again, turn on your decision making again. Because if corporate America took it out of you, you've got to bring it back. And I see so many executives struggle trying to be an entrepreneur because of that. Yeah. Many entrepreneurs that were corporate have to have an adjustment because at corporate, someone's going to clean the office. Someone's going to answer the phones for you. Someone's going to get the coffee. Someone's going to set up the phone call. Someone do the appointments. Someone might even make some of the sales. Someone might make sure the systems work perfect. Well, when you shift from uh, an employee to entrepreneur, you know, CEO for the first year might mean chief everything officer, which means you've got to do everything that's out there. You know, and then as you start to reel this in and realize that what are your top three skill sets that truly drive the business from revenue and profits and learn to delegate everything? If an entrepreneur never learns to delegate, they'll never get out of the box. They'll never elevate to usually ne- never more than six or mid six figure business. And, and in reality, what I've found with a lot of these entrepreneurs that were employees and even a really great employees and even at a high level that they wind up locking themselves into what I would almost call the box where they just can't see outside of it because they're so programmed over so many years. So when you say find a mentor, I think that's one of the greatest things that all entrepreneurs can do is, you know, get mentors that have done it. I believe that if they haven't lived something, they don't know it. So find mentors that have lived what they're going to teach about, not from some book. Cause I think books are dated. I think you've got to be in the field, out in the market, learning from real people that are building real businesses. And then once they change their daily habits after about 21 days or 30 days of doing something, they move outside the comfort zone into what's called the real zone. And, and the real zone is where the entrepreneur has to wake up early, go to bed late. You know, I, I tell entrepreneurs, the crazy test for an entrepreneur is that we're the only ones that will work 100 hours a week so we don't have to work 40. But that's so the truth. So, you know, I, I think when they can move from that understand the tactical side of being an entrepreneur, which is, you know, set KPIs, have really clear key performance indicators every day, have habits that move down a path of acquiring customers, have habits that move down a path of learning and and, and having a coach, a mentor. Because if you look at the health club industry, for example, about 85% of those that join a health club never show up. But 97% of those that hire a coach show up. So once again, transitioning from employee to entrepreneur is a game changer because it certainly requires a different set of tactical daily plans versus what you are programmed for in corporate America. So, Bill, talk, let's talk about so leadership. Number, I say we both would agree. Number one, let's talk about sales, sales and getting acquired customers, the acquisition. Give some specific steps for that beginning entrepreneur who's maybe by themselves, maybe has one person, just not getting it done. How do they start selling? I think the second part of that equation is systems. I believe that systems win, people fail. So in systems, number one, you've got to have a product that's priced to sell and priced for profit. Number two, you've got to have lead generation. Without qualified leads, you're selling to your broke brother-in-law. 
And that's not going to work. That you're trying to beat up your friends and family zones, never going to work. So what I recommend everyone do when it comes to this side of it is that get a book cover done. Get positioned as a subject matter expert. Once you've done that, get the word out. Social media, you can launch a new podcast on Anchor. It's free. You can create a, a new Facebook page under a business page as an author. It's free. Begin to create a special report. It's so simple to do. Create a five-minute audio on freeconferencecall.com. Take the audio. Make that the link on the back of your business card as a gift. That's five minutes of five things you have to know before you hire an attorney, a coach. Before you hire anybody, get the special report for your niche. That allows somebody to opt into a qualified message that talks to them with pure education versus sales. I believe the future is in marketing is all education first. People love to buy. They hate to be sold. So if you'll just create some really simple things, business cards, next day flyers, 5,000 business cards, 40 bucks. Not good at design, go to 99design. They'll make the design for you. Now you've got a really good looking card that has your social media on the front, has a gift card on the back. The gift card, of course, is your intellectual property. That's simple, special report. But I will tell you that's one of our greatest opt-in tools is just give away great content. Let the buyer buy because they'll definitely buy if you give them good information first. Now, once you've done that, you've got to have a presence on social media. So on Instagram, make sure that you're using autoresponders. On Instagram, use a service like Pixly, simple way that they can push the button, goes right to your offer, right from your image, from your Instagram account. On Instagram, make sure you get loaded into what's called IGTV. Get to those 10,000 real followers, not fakes. Do not go out and use these bots to get fake Facebook or fake Instagram. You'll have 100,000. I see there's 100,000 people follow them, but they got two comments. Then you know it's a fake account. And then, of course, on LinkedIn, if you're going after executives, I like a platform called Linked Helper. It's an easy way to do targeted demographics to your perfect customer per day. Because you've got to look at your overall marketing. We look at three circles, lead generation, customer acquisition, customer retention. If those three cogs are not working in unison, you're going to have a business that is going to, is going to stifle probably every 90 days. The, the fresh leads with real leads that are qualified have to come in. Make them go through a simple opt-in. Use mobile opt-ins. Mobile text opt-ins become one of the most powerful services I've seen in a long time, where today we can send out text messaging with a 90% open rate and a 35% click rate versus our emails at 20 to 24% open and a 2 to 6% click. See, the market is moving everything mobile. And either you're mobile or you're watching it happen. So a few quick tips for them, as we just gave a couple of different resources and tools that are out there. There's a new tool called InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. It's like nine bucks on the App Store. It allows you to upload a video, edit the video, push one button, goes to all your sales channels, all your social media sites. And once again, think about this. If you're just producing these little one-minute videos twice a week, and then, of course, putting them in a place where they can get some content and get some get some traffic to it, and the traffic believe it or not, will come as you serve your existing customers. Serve up good content to your existing customers. They'll send you more great customers. So when we look at the system side of this, you have to have lead gen. And that's just a few. I know this is a a shortened podcast, but I want to give them some tools they can use right now today. Most of them are free or cost next to free and have good printed material. Don't be afraid to spend a few hundred bucks on good printed material that gives your brand the best chance to win. And if you're going to go out to these events, you've got to learn to speak. You've got to learn to put down a two-minute to five-minute power pitch where if you want to speak to millionaires in a city, go to Vistage. Business people, BNIs, Rotary, some of the tips. I like Club Corp for these events. But get that message down where you've got a book cover done, you hire a virtual admin, they call to get you a, a five- or ten-minute talk there, and you've got to be consistent. Success for entrepreneurs today is being consistently persistent and not waiting for things to happen. If you're not out there making it happen, and this is not you having to make all these phone calls, this is you really tactically understanding, have someone that gets you booked for some of this stuff within we call the TMZ, the 30 mile zone. So if you're building locally, build local, but every week you go network, don't go not work. And network means you network from the front of the room, not the back of the room. And these are a few things on the system side that when the marketing side, number one, creates a lead gen, and of course, everybody, you've got to ask for the sale. You know, either you move them to a consult or a good sales page. If the sales page doesn't work, move them to a group consult. If group consult doesn't work, move them to a one-on-one. 
Because if you don't know how to sell, you're not going to make it as an entrepreneur. It's not going to happen. You have to have absolute belief and faith that what you do for that client is going to serve them well. And then it's not about trying to sell it all. Be so good at attracting the right client. Make your marketing so good that by the time the conversation comes up about getting started, all you're asking for is a credit card to help them get enrolled and get started today. So that's a few tips in five minutes that I'm sure will help with some of your listeners. Wow, that's awesome. So talk a little bit about the, the systems the resource. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So I'm going to dive into that a little bit. So when you say those, and you hear a lot of entrepreneurs don't have tech help. I hear this all the time with the, with the clients that we bring in. Um, in fact, you know, this afternoon I'm doing a business planning online for a lot of our folks. And I know this will come up is great resources. They don't know how to hook them up. So what do you tell that entrepreneur who's not that technical? Where do they go to get the support to even hook up, whether it's, you know, Infusionsoft, Entreport, MailChimp? I mean, just the, the, what we call the basic system setups. Where do you tell beginners or people who just aren't that technical to go to get that help? Well, I think you start one tool at a time. So what most people do is they try to tackle every tool at once. Don't do that. So number one, the first thing start, go to Gmail and get a G Suite set up. There are so many free courses and free videos of this stuff, right? You can't use AOL, Hotmail, Gmail is your, so you got to use your GoDaddy. You got to use your own domain name. So whatever your website is, make sure all your emails go through that one email. So it looks very professional. You can still keep your Gmail account, but now, now you have no problems with any viruses. It just works a hundred times better. So the basics are the basics. And then of course, you'll need good graphic design. So if you do a lot of photos, there's a service called Design Pickle. Design Pickle for like a couple hundred bucks a month will give you a graphic designer and make all your graphics for you. Because online today, it's not always putting your picture up there. It's putting up photo quotes. It's putting up good one-minute videos. And if you're not real tech savvy with this stuff, go to a website like Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K, Upwork.com, and find someone that can do some of these things you're not great at. Because if you're going to be busy trying to make graphics, you're not a graphic designer, You'll spend all day, and by the time you're done, it'll still look bad. So you're better off to hire this stuff out. So these are little things, but I think it's like one step at a time world. It's like, number one, let's get our email working. Number two, let's make sure our graphics look good. Number three, let's figure out what is going to be my price to sell. What is going to, what's, my, what's going to be what we call our core offer? Not your upsells, not your downsells. Get to your core offer. Now, let's make sure that we have a good marketing card, just a simple 8.5 by 11 marketing card or even a 6 by 9 card for your core offer. See, somebody like 99designs can make you a killer design for your core offer card. I like the core offer card, the front of a six by nine card, big print. Big print, logo, a little bit what you're talking about, your logo on the bottom right-hand side. When you turn the six by nine card over, it's gonna have your picture top left, a paragraph about your company, your product, your service. On the top right, it's gonna have the bullets, which are the results the clients get when they work with you. I've watched companies launch off a six by nine postcard that just told the story. And at the bottom of the card, bold print at the bottom, how they take action, how they can get the information. Now realize most people are visuals. They want to see something in print. So give them a corporate brochure, make sure it's in print. This stuff is not that hard to create. And when you're first starting out, a six by nine postcard, a good business card, everything I'm talking about is also used digitally. So don't think, well, I'm going to go have to pass this stuff out. No, today you think that's the case. Now these cards are passed out to everybody. So understand that wherever this stuff can be used in one format, it can be used in multiple format, which means that each week you're putting out those one minute videos. Everybody that's on this line today can go to YouTube, set up a simple YouTube channel. And if you've got an iPhone or a smartphone of any sort, you've got more technology in that phone for doing simple one minute content videos than people have had for 25 years. So your, your yep. technology doesn't have to be that super fancy. And if you want to get a little fancier, I do recommend a service. It's uh, like $3 a year called V-Scope, V-E-E, Scope, S-C-O-P-E, Live, V-Scope Live. It's an app in the App Store for $3. It turns your phone into a green screen machine. You can be doing live green screens without a green screen anywhere you want to travel to. And it's super easy right from your phone. You can hold it up, do a selfie at the Hollywood sign, hold it up. You'll be in Tahiti, gives you all the backgrounds, all for $3 a year. So if you're on a budget, great. If you've got a big budget and you want to hire people for this, that you can do too. There's no shortage of resources for them and stuff. But if you'll just start with the basics and work on the sales, then you can go through the text as you go through one at a time. And even if there, I know there's 20 different social media platforms, pick the one where your customer lives 
This is important. The customer lives on. And then the rest can be distributed. So, for example, if you have an Instagram account, you can post an Instagram. It goes to your, your Twitter account. It'll hit your Facebook account. But pick the one that you really focus on where your customer lives. Put your time and efforts there. Put your time and efforts in those areas. And if you don't like writing articles, there's a service called Scripted, S-C-R-I-P-T-E-D, scripted.com. They'll write professional articles for you once or twice a month, like 59 bucks an article. So there's a lot of services that can let you buy back your time. So you focus on what we talked about. Go out there and make some sales. You know, a friend of mine just sold his company for ridiculous numbers. And 25 years ago, he said, if you'll just go see the people and tell the story, the sales will take care of itself. And if you'll do ratios for that. You know, so you've got to keep track every week on don't get all caught up and I've got to have everything perfect. Listen, it's never perfect. We run 300 events a year. We get in front of entrepreneurs every week, every day. It's still not perfect. We're still working on doing new websites and launching new postcards and media cards and little business cards. You've got to always be testing, testing, testing. And then as you get your sale down, then learn how to sell it through social media. Learn how to get those leads into a good funnel. And all the funnel has to be is an opt-in page that moves into a consult. Well, how do I get that built? How does all that work? Well, most importantly is that keep it simple. There's actually platforms now that are mobile-based. You can opt in. It does the sales page for you, sends you a lead right away, and then does the autoresponders. So I know this sounds like you're like, oh, my God, this is so much again, but go back to the basics. Get a, good business, okay. get a good business card. Get a good postcard that can be used for digital. Also get a good corporate brochure. And then, of course, follow through. If the customer buys, call them. <laughs> you know what a, what a concept this is, right? <laughs> no, it's shocking. Uh, so talk a little bit about that. I mean, I know uh, we've been in this for so long and it's shocking to me. The amount of people who are out and I love that you'd like network from the back of the room, go out and find their one or two or three friends versus get the whole room and then never follow up. So I know we're, we're, we've got a tight time. I have to bring you back a few times, keep talking through the depths of some of this stuff, but just follow up. I think it's the death of most companies. It's especially women. And I always pick on women because I am one. So I get to <laughs> more than men. And it's not just women, but a lot of them is if they want it, they'll follow up. They'll call me. No, they won't. And, you know, I, I swear to God, we should write a book. Bill that says build it. I guarantee they're not coming. Like they are not coming. You have to follow. And, and talk Thank about you. the depth of follow up. Is it one time? Is it three times? Is it 10 times? What's the follow up that isn't going to have them be? I believe the future of follow-up has gone from a 30-day cycle to a four-hour cycle. So within four hours, they should get this from you. Number one, they should get, the minute they opt in, they should get access to a free newsletter. So give them a newsletter. Number two, give them a free five-minute video. Pure content, no sales. And this can all be done from your mobile phone. You don't got to talk to them. Well, everybody get a pen and paper. I go back there because this is really, really, really important. Yeah. Is but one, two, three, four, go again. Once you have been in front of any audience anywhere, you give them an opt-in. It could be email. It could be a text opt-in. I prefer text opt-in. From the text opt-in, give them access to it. Give them stuff for free. So a free newsletter is a great place to start. Even a special report. Five things you have to know about hiring a, a wealth coach. And it's just five great tips on a simple PDF. The minute they get that, that's within 30 seconds of them opting in. Two minutes later, free newsletter. Two minutes later, five minutes later, free video. Five-minute video, keep them short. From that to a, either a sales page or a consult. This is all, we're moving from that 30-day cycle to a four-hour cycle. The minute you can condense those time frames through automation, because AI is not going to slow down, it's only getting better. The minute you can do that, the customer likes visuals. So make sure that as you attach the stuff that goes out, move them to a visual. 85% are visuals, and yet we're still trying to sell through auditory. So let the visual do the work for you. And then, of course, here's the fun part. The less that you try to force the sale, the easier the sale becomes. So now they know they need what you have. They know you can solve their problem, their issue, their challenge. And now it comes down to, will it work and will it work for them? And if you've demonstrated that, now, of course, the follow-up comes in. Every two weeks, you follow up for the rest of their life. Every two weeks, you give them some content that moves to their mobile phone or their email that lets them keep up with what's going on with your business. Your newsletter is always simple. Five-minute video, two success stories. At the bottom, always create a call to action. Always have a call to action. Make it different each time. Don't lower your prices. Just add more value. So we have found in the third part of this is that you've got to be the leader. You've got to have systems, and you've got to be accountable. 
we teach all about LSA. And so the accountability side means you've got to keep score every day. You got to look at the ratios every day. Starbucks knows your sales every 10 minutes. Walmart, 60 minutes worldwide, know all their sales. Entrepreneurs, every, I don't know, four months or something like that. But the minute you have ratios daily, right? The minute you have the ratios daily, you can get better or get worse. Jim Rohn said the guy that can sell one out of 10 beats the guy that sells nine out of 10. He just has to make more presentations. And when you're starting out, if you haven't done at least 100 presentations on selling your product or service, you haven't even started the business yet. And the execution, the accountability side is keep score every day. Make sure that you've got a little a little sales sheet that just shows how many I talk to, how many I present to, how many to help get started. You know, if you'll just do those simple, basic things when it comes to follow up and follow through, you'd be surprised how much more productive you become. You don't got to be fancy. A simple Excel sheet works just fine for now. And then, of course, as you start to have more sales, have more affiliates, then you can move into Entreport and, you know, all the fancy software that's out there, Keep or Infusionsoft, whatever it's called. But in the beginning, you need to understand that sales, once again, is a big part of your business. And it, it really is up to you to step through that and make sure you follow up because, I have found clients come back and buy from us three and four years later, three and four years later that got a CD, got a download, kept getting their emails, got a newsletter, came back out for the next event and then signed up there because the time was right for them. So, you know, and, and we generate between five and 6,000 leads a month. So I understand that follow-up is critical and king, but if you don't automate your follow-up now, you'll never automate it later. That's true. So true. So, Bill, we got to run to an end. Okay. So, again, uh, tell them uh, at least a website, you know, where they learn more about what you do and uh, your companies. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm sure you'll, we'll be on your website, too. But obviously, my name is Bill Walsh, and I'm the CEO and founder of Power Team International. You can find us right online. It's really simple, www.ipowerteam.com. And our focus is we invest in startups. We have great business courses, great speaker courses, and incredible lifestyle events. So, www.ipowerteam.com. And Really excited for all the stuff we're going to work on together in 2020 and uh, super excited to keep watching you thrive and teach others do the same thing. So keep up the great work, Lord. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. And those of you that are out around the world, anytime you want, you can always go to asklaurel.com, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L. Ask a question, make a request, and we are on there daily responding. And if the request is really, really specific, I will take that live on YouTube and answer on our Ask Laurel channel out on YouTube. So stay tuned. We'll be back uh, with Laurel's Real Money Talks. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? Visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week.